This video shows you how to get our Holiday Coro dongle and DMX controller to program and to control your lights from LOR S3. Now, this also works with X Lights 2012. Now, what this does is this will allow you to not only set the start address of our DMX module, so if you have our very popular DMX controllers, you can use that. But if you just want to add DMX to your existing LOR install, you can do that for less than $20 with our cable. Now, in this package, you'll receive the USB to Cat5 adapter and a coupler. Now, what we've done is we've set that up here. We've set up the output of the dongle to come to the coupler. And all we've done is simply configured it to work with this DMX controller. Now, this dongle will work with any DMX device. It does not have to be our DMX devices. So if you have other DMX controllers, you can use this dongle with those devices. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and set up the device in LOR. So what we're going to do is go ahead and go to Lightarama. We're going to select Sequence Editor. <coughs> We're going to go ahead and select new animation sequence just to get in here. And we're going to go to the edit menu, then to preferences, then to network preferences. So edit, preferences, network preferences. Now, if you have an existing LOR network and an LOR dongle, we recommend just leave those alone. You can use this dongle and simply just add it to your existing sequences while leaving all of your LOR sequences and hardware the same. What you would do is you would have your LOR dongle configured up here. You would select the port. It's probably already configured. And then you would simply come down here, add our dongle to the existing LOR dongle and run those cables out of this dongle to your DMX devices. Now, what you want to do is go ahead and select the device, which is the dongle. The Holiday Coral dongle will have an device ID that starts with AH00R and then the last three letters may vary slightly. Now if you're seeing a lot of different devices here unplug all of the USB devices from your computer excluding your keyboard and mouse and this dongle so that you just have those items connected so you can narrow it down. Okay now we're going to select raw DMX now you may have heard of the Intech Open adapter, and this is compatible with that, and that is the RAW DMX. Now we're going to go ahead and select OK. It's going to warn us that because we've made changes to the network, we need to cl close and restart LOR sequence editor. So we're going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to save anything. Now one other key thing to be aware of when we run this is we need to run the control panel. Now be aware that it's running through a default sequence right now this controller will run for a default sequence when it does not receive a DMX signal. So right now it's not de receiving a DMX signal. When I start this control panel, the control panel, and you'll see that the lights went off, the control panel is located in the system tray down here. It looks like a little blue or red light. We can see that it's currently enabled, and we can also right click on it and see the different settings. What this does is it simply takes the output and talks directly to our adapter, our dongle, and allows you to output DMX. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and go back to Lightorama, and we're going to open up the sequence editor. Now, for simplicity, we're going to go ahead and do an animation sequence. What we would recommend, if you do have existing LOR sequences, we just suggest leave them as is. Open up your existing sequence and you're just going to add controllers. Add this controller, add other DMX controllers. Alright, now when we created this new sequence here, you can see that it's dropped in eight controller or eight channels on a controller. So what we're going to do is go ahead and change those over from the default because these are currently LOR controllers. We're going to change them to DMX. So we're going to go to tools channel configuration. Again, we're going to go to tools, then channel configuration. Now, currently we have an LOR controller configured. That's automatic. So we're going to go ahead and add a controller. So we select add a controller. Now, we don't want to add an LOR controller. We want to add a DMX controller. But in LOR, it's called a DMX universe. 
Now, because we configured the controller to output to DMX Universe 1, which is going to be the case in most uh, installations, uh, we're going to select Universe 1. Now, you don't see a three-channel controller in here because this nomenclature is more related to LOR, which has 16-channel controllers. Uh, but go ahead and just select 16 channels. You could, if you wanted to add the entire universe, add all 512 channels. Now, for simplicity, I'm just going to add 16. Now, what we have here is we have some LOR controllers and then DMX controllers. So, to clean this up, what I'm going to do is go ahead and delete my LOR controller that was added by default. Now, what we have now is a DMX universe. You can see that. And it's on universe 1. And it's on circuit 1. Now, circuit is a terminology used by LOR. The terminology used in DMX is channel. So, we're using channel 1 and there are up to 512 channels in a DMX universe, we're using channel 1, 2, and 3 because this controller has channels 1, 2, and 3. And 1 is red, 2 is green, 3 is blue. Now, we have some extra channels down here. I'm just going to go ahead and delete those. You don't have to delete them. If they're just in there, that's fine. But for simplicity, I'm going to go ahead and remove these. Now, your channels don't have to be sequential. So you can have channels 1, 2, 3, and then skip 4, 5, 6, and then go 7, 8, 9. All right, what we've got here, three channels, universe 1. It's all set up. We click OK. We can now see that we have the channels. Now, they're not real clear here as to what channel they are. If you hover over them, you'll see that it says DMX Universe Network is Universe 1 and Circuit 1. If we click on it, we can also see that same information. Now, it may be more helpful for you to name these something more uh, useful, like uh, EMX Channel 1. Now, this may or may not matter because we are going to combine them into what are called RGB channels. But for simplicity, I'll go ahead and name these. Now, these relate to the actual channels used on the device, Channel 1, 2, 3. Now, we'll see that these are separate channels. Now, this is an RGB device, but it does have three separate channels. So what we're going to do is go ahead and just turn on those channels. We're going to go up here, turn on red for one second, green for one second, and then blue for one second. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and just test that before we convert this to an RGB channel. We're going to do that by going to play and making sure that we have control lights checked off. This will allow us to output directly from the sequencer and test our sequence. Now we're going to go ahead and say start the sequence. You can see red, green, blue. So you can see that it's working just fine individually. Now what we want to do is because these are all in one device, we want to treat these as one channel, one RGB channel. So what we're going to do is I'm going to right click the first channel and I'm going to say convert to RGB channel. And Let's say that this is a device, and this device is the RGB Mega Ball. What we might put in here is RGB Mega Ball number one. Now, if we had a lot of different channels and we had to do a whole bunch, so let's say, for example, we had 40 devices and 120 channels, we could do it this way. But we only have three, so we're just going to go ahead and select these three. Now, what it did is it went ahead and combined them together. I can expand them by dragging them out. You can see by clicking this side, this little indicator on the left is red, green, blue. It just tells you this channel is one single channel. Now, you can see that it's actually comprised of multiple different channels. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go up here to this device. And we're just going to turn it on as white. And you can see when we select white, white is a combination of all colors. So we have red, green, blue, and then we'll move into white. So let's go ahead and play that. So we have red, green, blue, white. Now, that's how easy it is to add the Holiday Coro DMX dongle output device to LOR S3 version 3.3 or greater. If you have any questions, please see us at our website.